has been a quite fantastic final here in Auckland. For the biggest win of his life. wins the Auckland Dance Masters in an absolute thriller. PDC player, PDC winner, Australian, indigenous Australian, dad, family man. When you go up on stage, who are you representing? Who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for all of those? Everything you just stated, that's what I'm about. I don't just go up there for myself, <clears throat> I go out for my family and my baby. Um, it's just, I go up to make people proud and um, do the things I've got to do to win. You've made a lot of sacrifices to be a dart player, to chase your dream of being a, a PDC professional. How hard's that been? Um, to say it gets easier with time is a, is a lie. I mean, um, in the first six months we tried it together as a family, it didn't work out, I had to come back on my own. Um, I slept on a couch for a good part of 12, 18 months. What's your setup like now? You moved over to Nottingham, your manager's found your place. You're basically with a bunch of young guys at uni, aren't you? Yeah, I, um, when I first moved across in the first six months, I did a Riley tournament and uh, I met some boys through that tournament and uh, became good mates with them. And then um, after the, the split between me and the former management, um, they said, we've got a room available for you. Uh, that's quite reasonably priced and uh, we want you to move in. How tough is it? You must speak to your family all the time. You know, like how, how often do you do it? How do you do it? Are you FaceTime them back home? I'd say about, it'd be about three, twice a day it'll be, twice a day. One before school, one after school. Um, the one before school is somewhere about 12, half past one, our time away. Um, just to say good morning, talk to him while he eats his breakfast and, and tell him have a good day at school. Then when he gets home, it's what happened at school, how were you, did you get in trouble? You've talked in the past about trying to be a positive role model for your community back home because often you're not well represented in, in the public, in the media and you don't have as many role models as you would like. Our role models usually come from football players. You got AFL players and rugby players as well, and the like. Um, <clears throat> darts are a different sport, indeed. And every Aboriginal person you talk to, some way around here, yeah, they've played darts. And um, it's just an open channel to be waiting to be flowed. Now then, number twelve. Absolutely incredible. Carl Anderson hits a second nine darter of the day. When you spoke to me after you hit the nine dots at the world, you used the phrase putting down footsteps for others to follow. You are blazing a trail and becoming the first winner of a PDC title as an Indigenous Australian. That's a big thing for you and your family and the wider community. Isn't it? Like I said to you on the day, Dan, it was, um, it had to happen. It was something that I, I envisioned before, but I'm, I'm not very outwardly spoken about what I think of and um, it was it was on the cards a couple of times in tournaments. It's not been easy for you, you mentioned you know you split with your first manager when you came over, you've had visa problems, your first year you're in a house fire as well. Yeah it was the end of um, the January break we had, I came home, I bought about 400 quid worth of clothes for my son for Christmas. I put them in the, uh, in the bag, wrapped them up for Christmas, put them in there and um, of course we have a late Christmas because I'm always away. And then uh, we come back from the Gold Coast after a holiday and that night went to Mum's house, stayed there for the night and then uh, it was probably about 3am in the morning. I woke up to hearing Mum screaming so I thought someone was in the house and I got up and, and got on the sand, I was in my jocks at the time, I was sleeping in bed and uh, I got up, ran to Mum's room, opened the door and flames just came out of the door. Um, I told mum to get out of the house, I told Tara and Charles to get up and we all got out of the house and then dad tried to run back in and I grabbed him and told him it was too late for anything to come out so um, I think within five, maybe three to five minutes of me opening the door for mum, 
Mum's whole room was engulfed in flames. My room was behind Mum's, that was in flames. Um, the firefighters got there probably about an hour and a half later. Then by the time the house was gone. That must have been one of the most scary experiences of your life, wasn't it? At the time, I don't think I was scared, Dan. It was more the adrenaline I went through. I had to be, I was, I had, I had Tara and Charles, so I had to look after them at the time. You know, it, it's, it, it, I had a sense of responsibility, Dan, so I felt like I had to do something. So I kept calm. I think Tara tried to walk out of the house with the flames up. I told her to get down and crawl out. Um, we got outside and um, I think probably about an hour and a half, two hours later, that's when it really hit. Did anything survive? The firefighter came out with a drawer. On top of the drawer was Tara's handbag. That was gone. He came out. The only thing that was still breathing, as I say, was a passport. So the only thing that survived this house fire was the one thing that could get you back? Pretty much. Darts. Pretty much. As soon as, I found, as soon as the fire went up, I thought, well, that's me down for darts now. I'm back home, I'm working. And then he came out and he goes, son, is this yours? And I looked at it and I opened it and I started crying. You genuinely in tears? I was genuinely in tears because three months before that, my grandfather passed away. And the room that we were living in was his bedroom. How tough is it when these things happen, you know, losing family members and you're on the other side of the world? That's got to be the real, the real time, or, or missing those moments with your son, you know, the, the landmark moments in his life as he's growing up. There's been a couple of times that things have happened and uh, our dad's, dad's rang me up and said, you know, so-and-so has passed away. But it's a, um, it's something you've got to go with. I mean, I've made the sacrifices to come across, leave family and, uh, Try to form a pretty much a, a stable lifestyle for me. Yeah. Is that the thing that you always keep in your mind? That I am sacrificing all this stuff, but it's for all of us to have a future, to have a life. Pretty much is. Pretty much is. I'm dreading phone calls. Being this far away, not seeing family. And um, there's going to be one day I get a phone call and it's going to be the worst of my life. You must have had a lot of phone calls lately though, Kyle, which are all about congratulating you, all about how proud you're making people back home. That's got to spur you on. Uh, it? It's not just from back home, Dan, it's from here as well. I've got mates that I have in Nottingham, some of the old guys that I chat with, like you've got Jim Beardmore, Ty, Ty Ward, all them guys back over in Notts, they're, they're, they've treated me like their own grandson, you know. I've never thought of quitting, Dan. Even when we first got knocked back for the visa, and me and me and Max sat down and said, what's the, what's the plan? I said, we'll give it one more shot. One more shot, if it doesn't work, then that's it. But let's give it one more shot. And it came back and they gave us a year. And now you're a title winner, and, and you've won a big stage title. Now I'm top 32, top look, looking at getting top 25, which was my goal for the start of the year. And who knows, could be top 20. Um, I'm playing the best arts of my life at the moment, Dan. I'm more confident. Uh, I'm never nervous on TV anymore. My doubles are going in. I'm confident on doubles, and my scoring is just impeccable when it comes in. So, um, I'm, what can we say? I've had three, four, five, six bites at the cherry, mate, and it still hasn't gone. All these people you're representing, they could have somebody who goes on and achieves something really incredible in the game if you keep on with that mantra of just keep trying, keep giving it one more shot, couldn't they? Over the next few months and years, you really could go and make all those people prouder than they've ever been.